Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our celebration of the fourth Sunday of Advent. A few, a few announcements. Just a reminder, if you did not reserve your seat for Mass on Christmas, please take the time to do so. Information is in the bulletin. Confessions this week on December 21st, Monday at 11 a.m. and on the 22nd, Tuesday, the week after the 6.30 p.m. benediction. Special remembrance of this Mass has been requested for Paul Sojak. Word of the Lord. 
Our response is, Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, My kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness.
we think of this time of the year and how central that mystery of the incarnation, that is, Jesus the Word, eternal becoming flesh, in the womb of the Blessed Mother Mary. His name itself signifies salvation has come. We think that why bells toll at those times. At 6, 12, and 6 again, our bell tower here tolls that angelus to remind us to pray this prayer. And I think of my time in Rome, too. And there's so many churches, and they're all going off around the city. In fact, I think the nearby churches sort of stagger them, so their bells will be overrun by the bells of the church next door. Something I really grew to love. It became part of the rhythm of the day and was meant to call people to prayer to remember this mystery of the Incarnation. Whilst the Church brings us to also ponder this mystery, this final Sunday of Advent, it allows the Blessed Mother really to preach a sermon to us today about how to truly prepare for Christmas. For she gives such a beautiful and for me, a captivating example of faith that could maybe overlooked because of how many rich things there are in this gospel today. Her fidelity is expressed, of course, beautifully in her fiat. That is, when she says, let it be done unto me according to thy word. However, even in the midst of this interaction with Gabriel, the angel, there's something else that happens that is so quite beautiful. It is our Blessed Mother. She hears this good news that as a follower of God's people of the Word, as a faithful Jew, she was anticipating and waiting for. Her people have heard the words of salvation, and the time of error of salvation had come. The Savior was going to come received the throne of David, but would preside over an everlasting kingdom. If this would be the entrance of God, one would be called the Son of God, the Most High. And as she hears this message, it's so profound that she never doubts or questions that fact, that salvation was coming. What she has trouble with quite reasonably is understanding how she would be tied to it. She asks a very reasonable question. How am I supposed to bear a child when I have no relations with a man? The angel explains yet a further miracle that she would conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit. And she responds then in step with her perfect faith is that she is the Lord's servant. Let it be done to me according to the word. She gives that example so beautifully because it shows that just how faith interacts with our ability to think and reason. She would have perfect faith, of course. She was destined to bear the Son of God. But this didn't mean she knew the future. She didn't have a time machine or a book or something that revealed to her every step she would take from there moving into the future. She wouldn't know that the Son, this most high God that would come, would be born in a stable and that they would be searching for room for her in the first place. She also, of course, would not know eventually that her heart would be pierced with sorrow as the Son and Savior she bore for the world would be pierced and crucified. But nonetheless, she has perfect faith to make a confident step forward. Perhaps the boldest ever said, Be it done unto me according to thy word. What an example she gives for us. And how we who have the gift of faith and divine revelation in our hearts and minds and in our souls to be able to move forward in faith even again, not knowing everything. There will be challenges in a year to come as there were challenges in this past year. 
there will be blessings waiting for us as well. But in fidelity to God, we know that salvation has come to us through Jesus Christ. Our Blessed Mother is giving us the perfect example of how to prepare for this Christmas and for this new year. To go down to our foundation, where are our feet standing? Is it on this truth of who Jesus is, that he has taken on our nature and redeemed it and makes us then the great recipients of salvation and eternal life? It's the same beautiful pattern so perfectly displayed by our Blessed Mother and for us to who follow her, who was the first and most perfect disciple of our Lord Jesus. She has faith. Faith first goes in who God is and that he is real and that her son comes as a gift from God and is God for the world. And from that belief in God and his goodness, comes hope, the next virtue, theological virtue. And why have hope? Because she believes that God will do the good things that he has promised to do, as echoed most recently by the angel Gabriel before. And then charity, the great love for God in return, to recognize he as our creator and our redeemer has made us and desires us to be his children. We love God then and love all whom he loves. Faith, hope, and charity, beautifully borne out to us in the perfect example of our Blessed Mother Mary. Let that be our plan for the year and for this Christmas. Again, to realize what we know through our faith and that strong foundation it doesn't mean we have to know everything, but it does mean like our Blessed Mother, we know what is the most important. I believe in one God, the Father of Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made, consubstantial with the Father, who in all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in the accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have a plan. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord of the Lord our God, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With our reliance on God and His gracious goodness to us, we bring him our prayers. For Pope Francis, may the Lord bless him in his zeal and joy for the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected officials, may the Holy Spirit conform their hearts to charity and justice as they make their governing decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer the harshness of winter, may the Lord in his infinite mercy Ensure they have adequate shelter and food for their tables. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we're all gathered here today. May the grace of discernment help us fulfill God's plan for each of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we're 
come face to face with Jesus their Savior, and for Paul's sojourn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers as we strive to know your will and follow the way you have carved out for us. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, the Christ has the Christ, the Lord is the Lord, and the Lord is the Lord, and the Lord is the Lord. May the Lord accept the Son of Christ in the hands, and the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the laws of the Holy Church. May the Holy Spirit, our Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your all, just as He filled with His power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all heaven. John the Baptist sang in his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice in the mystery of his nativity, so that he might find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory, as without end we have been. Holy, holy, holy Lord.
in a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for them through the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word in my soul.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So note that, the, that anybody who's made a reservation for Christmas masses, uh, you can pick up some tickets in the back. We are uh, there are envelopes uh, organized by the mass that you've signed up for. And if anybody's trying to avoid the crowd or see which one to go to, the 10.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve looks to be uh, mostly empty. So there will be plenty of uh, social distancing space for that one. But I'm sure more people will sign up this time for the schools. And we look forward then to celebrating Christmas as a family again. Anyone who is joining us uh, online, we know that we, please know we miss you. We just can't wait to see one another, all of us together, here again. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is in. Saint Michael the Archangel, the Lord is with you.